this is Miss Brown here to help you with your acceleration lab. Um, so the first thing, this is for the cart on the incline lab, um, and it is assumed that you've already run three or four trials of a car going down a ramp at different angles, and you collected your data somehow. Um, I copied a trial from uh, a student handout, so this is real data, um, which is always exciting for me because oftentimes I'm making it up for these videos, but today I have real data. Um, so the first thing you have to do, we are, we are trying to find an equation um, that matches this data um, for our position data, and we're trying to find a separate equation that matches our velocity data. So we're trying to come up with an equation for position and an equation for velocity. And this is similar to what you did for the battery powered uh, car lab. Um, but that time the equations were much simpler. Okay, now you have to deal with two equations because the position is changing and the velocity is changing. Whereas in the battery powered vehicle, the velocity is staying constant, okay? So first off, just the first thing we have to do is get these numbers. So A, B, and C are numbers for from the position equation, and D and E are uh, numbers from the velocity equation. Um, so first thing you should do is uh, copy your data into a spreadsheet. And um, if I always recommend that this first label you you label it. Um, that's because it will make your graph for you. And I'm not going to show you how to fix your graph um, today, but you also, I don't think, have to turn your graphs in, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so first you copy in your data, and then I just uh, select this data, um, and only this data, and I go to insert, chart, and it by default this time is a scatter chart, which is great. That's what I want. If it's not, if it is, sometimes it'll default to like a line graph or something like that. And you just always want to go to scatter. And if it's not in the suggested, you can find it down here, right? So click scatter. Um, once it's a scatter graph, um, notice that the axes are already labeled. So I've got time on the x-axis and position on the y-axis, um, just like I have set up up here. Um, to get my equation, I'm going to go over here to Customize. Um, and then the equation is under Series. So you click on Series, and you scroll down a little bit, and you check this box that says Trend Line. Now, it defaults to Linear, which is a line, but our data isn't a line. We actually are expecting our data to be in this form, AT squared plus BT plus C. Right, so that is a quadratic or a parabola. So I don't want it to give me a linear trend line. I want it to give me a polynomial trend line. So you're gonna click on polynomial, okay? And now it's a curve, now it's a parabola that matches my data better, right? This is a parabola that matches my data better. Now that still doesn't help me get an equation. So I have to then scroll down here where it says label um, and I'm going to say use equation. So we click on equation. Now this is the equation of this data. Well, of, of this of this curve that it drew that fits our data. Okay. Now one really annoying thing. Um, Google put these in reverse order. Like your math teacher always puts A, B, C, the coefficients in that order of like A is the one in front of the X squared, B is the one in front of the X, and C is the one by itself. But Google, for some reason, decided to do the opposite of that. So here, see right here where it says x squared? The number in front of that x squared is a. So a is 0 0.0895. And then b is this number right here, which is in front of the x, um, 0 0.166. Um, and then this last number by itself that doesn't have an X is, is C. So just keep in mind they're, they're in opposite order of what they should be um, by convention. Now, the, that's how you get the numbers. One thing I want to know you to know that 
Google again defaults displaying this as X, but it should actually be T because you have time on your X axis. So when you write this out on your lab handout, you should write the, the X's as T's, not as um, X's. Okay, so those are my coefficients um, that I have to get. And um, for the position data, but I also have to get some from, um, I have to get some from the velocity data as well. So I do the exact same thing. So I'm going to select this data, insert, chart. Now notice this time that it didn't, uh, uh, that it looks different. It's not, it's not a curve this time, right? So it looks, it looks like it's linear. Although notice here that, um, that the last data point is like flat. And so that implies that your car didn't speed up there. And that there might be a lot of different causes for this. Again, this is real data. Um, so it could be that that's when you caught the car or the car kind of hit the, um, the, the table instead of the ramp, or maybe there was some gunk on the track. Um, and so since I know that the car should have been speeding up the entire time, I am actually going to... Um, take that data point out um, and in fact I might want to take this data point out too but but let's let's deal with that in a second okay so um, sorry I lost my thing so here's my data because um, I only want the data while the car was speeding up so if the car ever seems like the velocity is staying the same I'm I don't want to keep that so I threw out that one data point so I've got customize again I'm gonna go to series uh, I'm going to click trend line and I'm going to pick linear. Um, and again, where it says label, I want to say use equation. Um, now they put it in order. So this one in front of the X, which remember that X is actually a T because we have T on our X axis. The number in front of the X is D and the number um, right here is E. Okay. So D is 0 0.237 and um, uh, E is, it's negative here, negative 0 0.0173. Now, just so you know, that number right there, anytime you get like 0, 0.0 something, that's really close to zero. Um, when you're answering the analysis questions, it might be easier to think about if um if you think of this number as hey that's really close to zero okay um now as i was saying before um because i didn't want to keep this last data point um because it looked like the velocity uh stayed constant there similarly my position data there might not be great either um so let's move this over here so this right here from like here to here seems more linear um, so if I delete this, if I delete this right here, this might, like, look how beautiful that matches the parabola now. Um, and so, and this position data is now going to match this velocity data. So uh, with that in mind, though, these numbers all changed. Um, but that's okay, because you want these numbers to match these numbers. I feel like I'm making this more confusing. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully this helps you get the coefficients, if nothing else. Uh, but so now I'm going to edit my a value. So a here was uh, 0 0.129. The one in front of x is 0 0.0645. And c here is 0 0.179. Um, that's a really good c value. That's beautiful. Um, and so now I have I have these these numbers, and it's hard to find number or relationships in these numbers with only one trial. So that was the point of running multiple trials. Um, so you did like four trials, and when you have all of your coefficients figured out, you're gonna like how do all of the A's compare to like all of the D's? Is there a relationship there? Like um, that's what we're looking for. How do all of the uh, B's compared to the E's, you know, like you're looking for patterns in this, in this set of data. Um, 
And, and it, again, it's hard with one trial to even recognize any patterns because right now it just looks like a bunch of random numbers. Um, so when you get all three, uh, four trials, hopefully you can um, compare. Now, you should know that your position data should always be a parabola and your velocity data should always be a straight line. If, that, if your data comes out and it looks different, if it doesn't look like a parabola and it doesn't look like a straight line, that is evidence that you did not get good data for that trial and you either want to, and you want to run that trial again if you can, um, or just know that that set of numbers is not going to follow any patterns. Anyway, um, I got distracted by a data error in the last data point. Um, so hopefully that didn't make this video super confusing. Hopefully that still helps you get all of the numbers for all of the equations. Um, hope you're all doing okay. I'm excited to meet you in November, November 9th.